So in, in this series of lectures, and please, if you're taking notes, right, you're trying to follow along, don't write this down just yet. All right. Uh, we will we will solve this. We will answer this question, but n not just yet. I, I put this up here because I, I wanted to give really kind of a practical example of the sort of question that we're talking about in this series. Right. We, we have a scenario where we have two or more variables. In this case, uh, it's two types of tables, right? Rectangular tables versus round tables. And we have a bunch of constraints. We know we have a, a certain number of people we have to seat, and we know there are, there's a maximum number of each type of table that the venue has. And we also have some kind of cost associated with these, these variables. And what we're trying to do uh, is to minimize the cost. Or, or there may be situations where you're trying to maximize, right? If you're talking about revenue, for example, uh, you might be trying to find the combination of values that that maximize uh, that revenue function. All right, so how, how do we do this? Well, there, there's a series of steps. Right? We're, we're, there's actually more than one, one way to do this. Uh, and the, in this first series, we're going to talk about what's usually referred to as the geometric approach. Right? And the way this works is it, it's a three-step process. First, I'm going to take this starting system of inequalities and I'm going to graph them. Right, so I'm going to find their solution set. Then I'm going to find the coordinates of all the corners, however many there are. And then it, it becomes a, a very brute force proposition. I'm going to take those numbers, those the coordinates of the, of the endpoints, and I'm going to insert them back into the function it's, it's, there's a name for this. It's called the objective function that we're trying to either maximize or minimize. And then it becomes a simple process of just picking the result that gave us, uh, in this case, the largest value because we're trying to maximize this thing. All right, so let's see about what, let's see if we can walk through these steps. First, I'm going to graph the system of inequalities. You notice these first two here. Right. X is greater than or equal to zero. Y is greater than or equal to zero. Uh, that's very common uh, in practical types of questions because, again, kind of referring back to the previous example, you can't have a negative number of tables. Right? So you, you'll often see these two as, as our starting point, and all these are really saying is that our solutions have to be in the first quadrant. And now the, these solutions can sometimes get a little messy, right, with, with the graphing if there's more than one line, all right? So instead of trying to do the shading that we usually do here, I'll just put little arrows here right, that indicate I need everything. I'm only looking at points above this line and to the right of this line. Which is going to limit us. You can, you can see the, the overlap there is just the first quadrant. All right, so how about this next one? X plus Y is less than or equal to 6. All right, well, remember, to get the boundary, we start with X plus Y equals 6, which is Y equals minus X plus 6. All right, so that's, that's a linear equation, yeah. Uh, it's got uh, a Y intercept of 6 that's right here. And its slope is negative 1. So it's going to go this way. And uh, if, you, if you test, let's just test the origin. Or if we put the origin in here, 0 plus 0 is less than or equal to 6. So the solution to this part is everything below the line. And now we can see where our solution set is. It's, it's kind of the area that all the arrows are pointing in towards. So it's going to be this rectangle here. So that's step one. We've graphed the solution to the system of inequalities. Now we need to find the coordinates of the corners, right? There's four of them. There's this one down here. That's the origin. There's this one up here, which we've actually already found. That was the y-intercept, right? That's 0, 6. 
And this one down here, well, that's uh, the x-intercept, right? So I, I know that the y-coordinate of this point is 0. And if I substitute that back into the boundary e equation here, I get uh, x plus 0 equals 6. So x is equal to 6. Excellent. Now I have uh, my three corner points. That's step two. Right? That, that's all there is to step two. Now for step three, I don't have a lot of room down there at the bottom, so I'm going to clean up a little bit up here at the top. And for number three, uh, I'm going to make a little table. And I'm going to put the coordinates, right, the, the coordinates of my uh, corner points, 0, 6, 6, 0, and 0, 0. And over here, I'm going to calculate the corresponding values of z. Right, so if I put 0, 6 in, I get 2 times 0 plus 6, which is 6. 6, 0 gives me 2 times 6 plus 0, which is 12. And 0 gives me 2 times 0 plus 0, which is 0. And now I can pick out my answer. I was asked to maximize the maximum value occurs there. So I would say that uh, the, the values that maximize our objective function are x equals 6 and y equals 0. Uh, just kind of twist this around a little. Obviously, uh, let's say hypothetically we've been asked to minimize. Right? If the question had been minimize instead, then my solution would have been this point here, 0, 0, since that has the minimum values. All right, so we've got another example here, right? And I, if you like, you can pause, right? Go ahead and try and work this out on your own. Then come back, and we'll go through it together. All right, so you notice we start off with the same criteria here, x greater than or equal to 0, y greater than or equal to 0. So that tells me right away that we're limiting our solutions to the first quadrant. All right, so how about the others? Well, let's see. I need x is less than or equal to 5. So I go over to 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. On the x-axis, that's here. And I need everything to the left of that. That's where the numbers less than 5 are. Then I'm going to do y is less than or equal to 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's up here. All right, And I need the numbers less than that. So, so far, uh, I'm limiting myself just to this box here, to this rectangle. And finally, x plus y greater than or equal to 3. Well, if I make this into an equation, right, x plus y equals 3, and that's the same as y equals negative x plus 3. So I'm going to go to the 3 here and keep track of that because I've got a feeling that's going to be one of my boundary points in a minute. And the slope is, whoa, that's not very close. Uh, the slope is, there we go, something like that. And there, right? Uh, and you, you see, it's important that you try to be pretty accurate when you're doing this. Because it was important to see here that this point is to the left of this one. Right? So that if, if I had just been sketching and I had drawn it inaccurately, if I had drawn it this way, See, then, then I would have gotten a very different final shape, right? I would have gotten that kind of trapezoid shape rather than, what do we have here? Five sides, right? One, two, three, four. Yeah, then this pentagon shape that we're actually going to have. All right, so if you test the origin in here, zero plus zero is not greater than or equal to three. So zero is not part of the solution. So I'm actually going to take this side of the line. And, of course, we're doing here, right? So my solution is going to be this pentagon shape. All right, so now we, we need the endpoints or the corner points. Well, some of them we kind of get for free. This one up here is 5, 7, 
one over here to the left is 0 comma 7. We already know the y-intercept here. This one was 0 comma 3. And finally, this one over here is 5 comma 0. That one there. All right, so this one is really the only one we're going to have to work for. That one is the x-intercept of my boundary line. So if I put 0 in here for y, I get x is equal to 3. And there's my third point, 3 comma 0. So now, once again, I'm going to make a table. And I'm going to have my points. I'm going to have my z values. My points are 0 comma 7, 0 comma 3, 3 comma 0, 5 comma 0, and 5 comma 7. So what are we going to get here? Uh, 0 plus 3 times 7 is 21. 0 plus 3 times 3 is 9. These will be just 3 and 5. And the last one here is 5 plus 3 times 7, which is uh, 26. And that's our winner. Right. That is where this function is maximized. All right, so what's next? Now, now that we've, we've, we've got the general method down, in right, uh, and, and the next lecture, we're going to look at that example that I had on the first slide and see how we can calculate the solution to this uh, kind of to that kind of practical question.